All right, now let's talk about light array emitter. This is another type of sensors. We have light array emitter and light array receiver. We also call this kind of sensor as light curtains many of the times. So what happened, it has eight set of light beams arranged inside this emitter, all right? And this is a receiver which receives these, these light beams. For instance, if I want to show you, it is like that. So this is an emitter and this is a receiver. It has a light beam which you cannot see visually, all right? So what happens if any object comes in between these light beams, these beams get interrupted. And that's how we get to know that there is any object. Sometimes it is also used for safety, for any operator to come inside a danger zone or a machine zone or a robotic zone. So this can be used for safety as well. So let's see in let's see in small example how we can use it in this conveyor system. So initially, let's see the different configuration we have. So we have numerical, discrete, and analog. So let's talk about numerical. So I'm going to play this environment, and you will find that it will show you some numeric value over here. Have a look. This box is giving you 192, and how this 192 is coming, I'll explain you. Let's see what the value we're getting for a larger box. So this is for smaller box for every this type of box will get 192. It's a fixed value. Now let's see for this bigger box. So this one we are getting 224. So this numerical means this is a decimal value which we are getting from the beams. So how it is coming. So this is actually what we are going to do is we are going to convert this value into a binary signal. So I'm going to use a calculator here which is 192. So I'll go to the decimal and I'll type 192 and see that it's in binary. It says one one zero 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 zero. Now this one one means the smaller object. This one object is interrupting just two beams. That's why it is one one. So it means it is interrupting these two lower beams. So if you convert this into a decimal number, it comes out to be one ninety two. That's why you're getting one ninety two for this type of box because it is interrupting interrupting just two beams. For this case, we are getting 224. So let's see how many beams it has interrupted. So when you go to the decimal, enter 224, and you go to the binary, it shows you 111. So three beams are interrupted by this bigger box. That's why you're getting 224. If you have more bigger boxes, you'll get a different configuration and you'll get a different numerical value here. So you can compare this value in your algorithm and you can find out the height of the box. So here we are measuring the height of the box. All right. So this was the one type of configuration, numerical. Now if you go to the second one, discrete, this will explain and justify what I was talking before. So have a look here. Now you'll have eight different signals of independent beams. So you can see that seven and eight beam will be interrupted. These two beams are interrupted by this box just because of the height. All right. So this justify what I was telling you. So in this case, you will get individual signal of the beams. I can show you here. This is for the smaller box. You get just two, two outputs, seven and eight. Bigger box, all three outputs. So you'll have different wires coming out from this sensor, which you can use individually in your controller to sense the signal. All right. So this was about a discrete type of configuration. Now, if you move to the second one, third one, which is analog type. Now, analog, analog type means this will give you an output with respect to the height of the box, and the output will be in form of voltage. That is 0 to 10 volts. Because we know that 0 to 10 volt is a very standardized voltage for control signals. Now, you're getting some value here. Let's see, this is 2.5. I'll explain you why this is 2.5. Because here, we are going to use a formula. And for the bigger box, you will get more than 2.5. Let's see that first and explain you how this 2.5 comes. Now this is, a big, this is a bigger box. For that you are getting 3.8. Now the formula is when we are going to talk about analog, it says you have to divide 10 volts because the maximum signal is 10 volts divided by number of beams, which means we have to find out the resolution. Okay? If one beam is interrupted, how much analog output will be generated? That is a resolution because it has 8 beams. So 10 divided by 8 counts to 1.25 voltage. Then you will multiply by how many beams are interrupted. So let's see this example. This was this medium uh, smaller box. We have two beams which are interrupted. So 1.25 into 2 is 1.25 into 2 is 2.5. 
So for medium box, we have 2.5. Let me show that again. And similarly for the larger box, three beams unwrapped. So this is 3.75. Now let's see this one. This is 2.5. Okay, 1.25 into 2 is 2.5. And this is for 3 beam, which is 1.25 into 3, which is 3.75. But they are showing, uh, showing you the round off, which is 3.8. So that's the analog value. Okay, this is also used for analog signals. You can give this value not to the directly to the discrete controller, but to the analog cards of the controller. These analog values. So this was a three configuration we have for light <coughs> array emitter and receiver. Okay, and the range which it can cover is maximum 1.5 meter. For this one you can use it horizontal as well vertical as well depending on the application so let's see the second one retro reflective sensor okay now if you see its top you'll find two LEDs one is green and yellow green means this has been aligned properly with the reflector reflector is what it's doing it is reflecting back the light emitted by the sensor now the advantage of the sensor is because its principle is more similar to diffuse but its range is much more than the diffuse its range goes approximately up to six to eight meters but the diffusive works just for 1.5 meters all right so that's why we have a reflector here now you will see here i'll just activate it start it is normally giving you the signal when the box is not here it's giving you the signal this is on so when its beam is interrupted the signal get lost and this will be off so yellow light in, uh, yellow when the yellow light is not on it means some object is there in front of the sensor when the yellow light, light is on, it means there is no object. Green light indicates that your sensor has been aligned properly. If I if I just misalign this one, you won't find a green light. Okay, it means the reflector is not properly aligned to your sensor. So you may have to make sure this is correctly aligned. You can see that light is exactly on. So when you are going to use this one, make sure this light is on, which which will you know give you a troubleshooting method to indicate the sensor is working properly. All right. So this was all about the different types of sensors we have in factory IO. It's your intelligence and your innovative ideas to use it intelligently in your application. If you have any doubt, you can put me a comment or you can check out the, the PDF sheet which is attached in the course to have details, minute details about these sensors, about their length, their sensing range and the formulas. Everything is written in this one. So you can refer the sheet or your reference. So in the next video, we'll see some operating operators we'll see some different types of switches and indicators we have so i'll see you in the next video thank you